Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Second video of the day. It's your boy Dave Neal, stand-up comic host of Bachelor in Paradise, a guy's review. Pretty soon we'll be back on Michelle season of Bachelorette, but still a lot of side drama going on in our world. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about Brendan's new apology. It's uh, not what you think. Natasha and crew in Chicago. And then Katie and Blake. Blake's getting drunk doing Katie's makeup, and Katie takes a swing at a follower. Love this. Love this. I think anyone who's watching Katie and Blake's social media are finding a newfound love for their authenticity. They're fun people, folks. I had it right all along. They're fun people. All right, do me a favor. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We are slowly approaching 50,000 subscribers. The strive for 55 or 100 or whatever you guys want to do. Just keep subscribing. You know, a lot of people think they're subscribed and they're not because the algorithm's been so kind to me. So do me a favor and subscribe. And also go to my Instagram, at dneals, for show updates. And if you want more behind the scenes, I got some new projects in the work. I'm taking all your donations. I'm throwing them back into the system. Tomorrow, I'll be posting on my Instagram the new equipment I have arriving that's going to let me mount different things, different cameras and lightings onto my desk. So I'm working on upgrades, new laptops on the way once the new MacBook Pro comes out. All right, so that's all happening, all thanks to you guys. So I wanted to give you guys a shout out. Araceli, the donations, Carolyn, Catherine, Alexis, Elizabeth, Mary with a coffee donation. So kind, so nice. Thank you all so much for that. The money is just, it's so, it's been life-changing. So I appreciate all of that. And like I said, it's all going back into the system. And I wanted to also say tonight, Hollywood Lab, Imp Hollywood Improv at the Lab, 7.30 p.m. stand-up show. Thursday, I've got a show in San Diego. You're going to have to join the Facebook group if you want to know what that show is all about. Dave Neal's community. We had like 30 members on Friday, and I just started promoting it, so we're up to 164. So everyone's going over there, so make sure to join. And let's go back. I already lost my spot here. And then my final, uh, uh, oh, here it is, the Facebook group. You can go click on my Instagram if you want to go find it there, if that's easier for you. They don't do the swipe ups anymore. There's a little button, so you can hit the button. And thanks to everyone. For everyone that says, I got them through 2020 or 2021, you know, these comments right here, I just have to say, Hey guys, it's a two-way street. You help me get through this in ways you will never, never really quite understand. So thank you all so much for that. Let's dive into this. Here's Brendan's new apology as put together by Bachelor Rabbit Hall. So here, have a listen. Clearly Piper and I wanted the max amount of followers and I told her straight up it's a big elaborate plan. But most importantly, um, and I know that I'm horrible in, in every way. Uh, so... That's that. Boy, it was really quick. You, you, if you really take that seven-minute apology and bring it down to 15 seconds, let's play it for you one more time. Clearly, Piper and I wanted the max amount of followers, and I told her straight up, it's a big, elaborate plan. But most importantly, um, and I know that I'm horrible in, in every way. Uh, so that's that. That would have been a better apology. I know I'm horrible. I came off bad because I am bad and blah, blah, blah. You know, you start trying to defend yourself. It just ain't the place, but very funny. Obviously, that was edited. That's not what he actually said. So Natasha is here with her stage mom, Victoria Fuller, who I've got a love-hate relationship with Victoria Fuller. I don't know. She's she's doing her. Good for her. Uh, I actually li I, I, I like following her. She's a, she's a wild card. You know, she's one of those, like, dissenters from Bachelor Nation, and I, I like that. I like people that speak a little truth to power and, Talk about why they, you know, no longer like the show. So I'm going to have a hard time playing this with the audio because it's uh, licensed music. So instead, I will play it with, um, how, about the, how about the national anthem? All right, so let's play the national anthem. Here's, here's them right here. How's that? So this is um, Natasha shaking her money maker and uh, Victoria with a nice camera work, just really getting in on it. Okay, that's nice. All right, so let's go on to our next story here. We got Natasha. So Blake basically was hosting a DJ event over the weekend. You know, really good marketing on Blake's end with what he's doing. I'll explain. So here he is. I mean, the guy, the guy, he's doing, he's doing really smart things with his following, okay? He's getting people to live shows, which is like instant cash, instant money. If Bachelor producers never call his name again, he's got his own thing going on, absolutely. So there he is doing that. But at the same time, he's inviting people, all of the other Bachelor people, and they all probably got paid in some way or another, uh, to, uh, they all showed up to Chicago for the show, and they all, you know, he did the Virgin Hotel kind of discounts. This is what you do. This is part of being an influencer. So um, it, you had Victoria Fuller, Tammy, the whole, the whole crew was there. 
Um, I'll show you Kelly in a second. So uh, there they are. Brings them all together. Uh, there's Kelly. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There's nothing more obnoxious I can imagine for a DJ than a, than a hot chick who wants to come, like, pretend to DJ. But, you know, you get the photos. They do the thing. I'm spinning on the ones and twos. It's like, no, Kelly Flanagan, you're not. You know what I mean? There's Natasha bringing the pup in. All right, so they're having fun. She's moving on with life. We'll get to how many followers they are, the follower accounts and all that. Uh, Blake with Natasha Dog, Virgin Hotel ad, Virgin Hotel ad, Virgin Hotel ad. Do what you got to do, Blake. Absolutely. Keep spinning on the ones and twos. Natasha, 463,000 followers. We can see half a million. We can see half a million. It's on the way. Will she get there by the end of Bachelor in Paradise? That's a good bet to take. I think so. And Brendan in the other direction, 242,000. So uh, she's nearly at double. Double would be uh, 484. If you're doing the quick math. She's not quite there yet, but nearly at double. All right, so we'll get into Blake and Katie here. This is Blake uh, doing a drunken live. As you know, it's his God-given right as a uh, Canadian citizen to come to the States Get drunk and go live with your fiance. I love this. Let's have a listen. Cherry burritos. Um, thank you, honey. Yeah. Well, what did I do? Tell me. Tell them what that I did. <laughs> I went to a party. You thought I was gonna come home late. What did I do? I came home with burritos. <laughs> Early. Oh my god. Yeah. The boys. Didn't, I didn't say bye to the boys. I just fucking took off. No, you didn't. Yeah. Well, fuck. There's a lot of people to say bye to, but. So I didn't do it, but I got burritos. And I actually had a beer with a random person on the street. It was Tanya. She was home with a kid. I'm traveling with a kid. And she saw me. She said, Blake, I know you. I saw you on a meme. Probably sexual. But anyways. <laughs> I'm actually not even drunk at all. I actually came home because I wasn't drunk. Well, maybe so. he's tipsy. Maybe he's not. There she is. Katie's I'm actually not drunk in any way. Maybe if I was are. drunk, I would have stayed at the place. And I probably wouldn't have. That's what, and then if, the, if you keep watching, that's when he kind of starts to slur again. But hey, be drunk, be, don't, be buzzed, who cares? He came home, he brought his ladies burritos, and this is what you do in the United States of America. Sure, babe, I'll be, at, I'll be back at a reasonable hour. You tell him what hour you'll be back, you come home half an hour early. It's just like when you like uh, when your dad's like, be home at midnight, you're like, I'll have her home by 11.30, and then you're home at 11. He's like, well, what a swell guy. It's like you got to overinflate. Hey, honey, I'll be home at 1. Then you come home at midnight with burritos, and you're the bell of the ball. You're the cast meow. You're the... Uh, yeah, with the, the whatever the other sayings are from the 50s. <laughs> so what, what they didn't show here is that he like panned over and you just see like a mat, a bare mattress on the floor. And I don't know if you remember when I moved into my new place here, we, we sold all of our furniture before we moved and then the furniture got delayed in arriving. So we were just like eating off of like literally like, uh, you know, just boxes for a few weeks with just like our fold up beach chairs. I get it, Katie. I understand you're in a new town. Katie's in San Diego. I'll be there Thursday. I've already sold some tickets to the show. If anyone wants to come to a show i'll be performing with my buddy josh potter very funny comedian in sant diago this thursday go to the facebook group if you want to get details i'm going to post the details for that right over there dave neal's community and uh is that all we got for blake i think that's all we got let's see what the comments say i'm so amused that he just rolled out without saying goodbye to anyone to go for burritos oh the old irish exit you know, how, how prophetic of him to be like, there were so many people to say goodbye to, so I didn't. We just left. That's exactly what you have to do. You just got to dip out. The old Irish goodbye. Oh, they say we're here. The Irish goodbye. It's my thing when I realize I'm too drunk and not trying to make a fool of myself. And then someone said, um, so, uh, I saw you in a meme. Uh, yeah, he's a fun drunk. Or sober. Either way, he's a fun guy. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, someone said, I buy them as a couple now. Oh, I'm glad Lemon Grooved now buys them as a couple. This is what's wrong. And I get it. I know. It's being nice. But I get it. It's like, look, what do you ever, whatever you see on the show, that's just not the story. They're fun people. And, someone, and, then, and then Blake, he looked her up and down. And he goes, you're a disaster. And someone goes, I wouldn't want my man calling me a disaster. And it's like, it's gentle ribbing. This is what keeps our relationship fresh. Fresh gently ribbing each other you know like trust me as a comic i cross the line i'll be out with my buddies we'll be smashing each other back and forth then i'll come home and be like what the, what, what what does your hair look like and then i'm like she's like you're an a-hole i'm like i'm sorry i didn't mean to i brought home comedy energy i apologize for that which can happen all right so i'm gonna play this next one i don't know if this is gonna get uh, booted because it might be licensed music but this is katie's latest tiktok 
explaining uh, how ladies can find a good man. Uh, this is uh, We'll call this rated R. Not, not necessarily because of swear words, but content-wise, we'll call this rated R, so you can decide whether or not you want to be a part of it. But um, hand you a towel. All right, let's go back. So let me go back to the beginning here. So dump his ass is the uh, title. On Ten million episode of dump his ass. If he does not hand you a towel, and I mean hand you a towel, and instead throws a towel at you, or even worse, gives you nothing when you are done, dump his ass. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're probably too young to be following my page. So please keep scrolling. Love it. All right, so here we have it, folks. Hey, hey, it's sexual health. It's it's loving people that are coming together, and it's a nice PSA by Katie there. Absolutely. So what is she talking about? So, of course, we know what she's talking about, right? She's talking, yeah, I know. So then someone left a comment, why do people do this? Why do people do this? Someone said, oh, Kate, and I get, listen, my audience ranges in age from probably teens to like 80s. And I understand there's a certain age threshold. Not everyone, there's there's older people that have a younger or more liberal uh, sexual mindset, absolutely. But there is like a, a mindset of people that go, oh my gosh, you're a lady. You can't be talking about these things. I do declare this is just so unladylike. If you cross your legs and uh, don't vote, you know, whatever the hell they tell people to do. Ah, uh, Katie. I love you. That's always a bad start. But this is not a good look. Talking about being uh, come on. <laughs> I was going to think of a funnier way to say it, but, but that is what it is. I don't mean that in any mean way at all. I respect you. But this is not what mature, respectable women talk about so publicly. Mature, respectable women don't talk about this so... P- is it public to be on TikTok? Does that count as public? I mean, come on. You gotta, if you're on TikTok, uh, you know, TikTok's a pretty uh, open, loose place to be. Katie responded, my first TV appearance was me holding a vibrator. I don't know what you expect. Sex is nothing to be ashamed of and certainly can and should be talked about. It's healthy and it's normal. Now, speaking of talking about sex, my last video, you know, I was just, I mean, I'm making light of a situation. I was talking about the biological clock. I'm trying to work on a stand-up bit here. How, like, it would be interesting if the men had the the same biological clock women did or if the roles were reversed. Because obviously... Women giving birth, like every, you know, like, like, uh, like what's it like right here? Like, look at this geriatric pregnancy is when you're 35 or older, which is insanity. I'm 36. So like to think that I'm already geriatric in certain ways, like I know my back hurts, but that's from carrying my YouTube channel. Right folks. Um, all right. So it's, so I, so I talked about like old, like how like men's sperm doesn't age as fast as women's, you know, reproductive you know, we men bring the sperm to the table. Women bring th- their parts to the table, uh, and and then and then I immediately got people like you know, sperm explaining to me, which I respect. Dave, you need to learn more about sperm. Quality of the sperm definitely declines as they get older. Most men make millions of new sperm every day, but men older than forty have fewer healthier sperm than young men. Biological clock works both ways. Now, listen, of course, of course, there's a, everyone's got a biological clock because we all die. So, I'd, eventually, sperm ain't working at all. You know what I mean? Uh, but obviously, it's di- it's different. Like you see men in their sixties, you know, knocking up a twenty year old. You don't see many twenty year old guys knocking up a six year old woman. You know, it just works. I'm not saying this. Is, it doesn't have to be a gender, but I understand. I do understand the point. And, and I, and I made this video like an hour ago. So I'm already getting so many comments. It's hilarious. Dave, just for your info, there have been studies done that show that a, after age 40 or so, the energetic sperm start to have issues with DNA sequencing that contribute to deformities of the embryo they had started. We also used to think it was hundred percent the woman's eggs, but it isn't. Oh man, energetic sperm. That should be the name of my show. Hey, it's Dave Neal with energetic sperm. My sperm don't get energetic unless I've had a couple cups of coffee in the morning. That's what gets them going. All right, too much info. Sperm quality and sperm counts. Not to get super nerdy, please go for it. But sperm counts have actually been on the decline for the past few decades at least. Uh, Example given. A 30-year-old today has fewer sperm than a 30-year-old in 1990. So while men don't have the same timeline as women, we may need to start asking the men in our lives to get their sperm checked. From what I have seen in in vitro fertilization offices of couples dealing with infertility, one-third can be tied to male infertility, speaking from a couple dealing with male factor infertility. But still, if one-third are tied to male, then two-thirds would be tied to female, right? So again, I'm not blaming women. This isn't a trigger towards women. This is just that it's like, look... I, my relationship, I'm 36. My fiance's younger than me. I'm not supposed to say what age, but she's several, you know, 
two years younger. Uh, and and uh, yeah, but uh, but she can play twenty eight. You know, <laughs> it's like you ever ask a woman what her age is? She goes guess. It's like you better guess three. You know, how old are you? You look seven. What do you want from me? You look fifteen. Does that make you feel better? Never get oh, never guess too. Never guess accurate. You look forty one. Yeah, you look like good skin, but you look oh boy, no, you look twelve. Uh, that's what they want to hear. Uh, <laughs> Walking a tight balance right now. But, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting conversation because obviously it's not shaming anyone. But, you know, if 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 men's sperm, like, you know, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, sure, they're less energetic. Sure, they're they're not, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, the, the mascot, you know, leading the charge at halftime, running out of the thing, you know, the raging Trojans. Sure, we're not that in our 40s. But, you know, there's still like, a, you know, a 40-year-old guy. I mean, look at, you know, can still do some damage out there, right? Last one. It's actually recommended that men freeze their sperm after age 35. You will have a lot more difficult time getting pregnant if the guy is over the age of 35. Listen, I don't have enough room in my fridge already. The freezer is full of, uh, you know, frozen pizzas. Last thing I need is a, uh, you know, power recapper hanging out in there just trying to wait for their shot. Oh, I get it. I get it. We're all, we're all having fun, folks. So let's go to our last one. This is, I'm just going to leave you guys out on this. This is Blake. I'll play, I'll play the whole thing. This is Blake doing Katie's makeup. We'll play this. See how he does. Right. Put on mascara. 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 Yeah, we're rosing up the cheeks. Okay. I love Katie's oh, God, skepticism. I have no idea. She's very skeptical. Should Tasha and I try this? Oh. I think I can make Tasha's makeup good. Oh, no. Why'd you make that face? She's got like a Cleopatra thing happening. Stop moving. <laughs> Men always go heavy on the eyeliner. Stop moving. <laughs> go closer. Oh. All right. <laughs> I think he's doing a good job. What do you guys think? So delicate with the skin. Oh, he's doing the eyebrows. You're going to break my neck. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> oh. I look sad permanently. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like a base massage. It's kind of delicate, though. A what? Mm. <laughs> Looks like. Oh, boy. oh, oh. raccoon, hey. Katie. Raccoon, raccoon. Oh, he said raccoon. That's okay. Oh, honey. <laughs> we... No, you look like the burger. The burger burglar. <laughs> the hamburger. The hamburger. <laughs> yeah. All right. That? What's that for? Man, the tools it takes to be a woman. All right, there he goes. He's doing smoky oh eyes. Oh my God, bro. More like smoky eye socket, right, guys? <laughs> yeah, put her in a headlock. There you go. He's motorboating the motorboat technique. Grab your head. Oh. Yeah, she's moving too much. You gotta grab the head there. All right. That's um, that's blush. Oh, oh boy, Jersey Shore, Snooky. Uh, oh yeah. Please. Oh, I see what you're trying to do. Oh. What I focus on is not having a clear, defined line or anything. But I sometimes notice young girls. Yeah, like Contouring. you don't notice anything there. <laughs> For me being animalistic, I like a raccoon. <laughs> God. Anything else you want to tell the people about this look? Oh, Tommy wants to join. Tommy got shaved. Look at this. <sighs> Cat mama. Uh, That's it. Tommy's like, are you a raccoon? All right, Next so up, Blake's makeup. Oh, I bet, he, I bet she can make Blake look hot. <laughs> I bet she can make him look hot. All right, so that's that, folks. A little fun to end you on there. Uh, more content coming. Don't forget, join the Facebook page. Uh, Patreon, if you want some behind the scenes of like the things I'm working on to make the channel better, the analytics, the, the back-end stuff, the stand-up comedy. I talk about it all on my Patreon live streams. Go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal. We'll have a pre- and a post-Bachelor in Paradise live stream tomorrow. Thursday, no live stream. I'll be driving down to San Diego for those shows. You'll catch the uh, details for those shows. 
on the Facebook page. So go check that out. We'll talk to you guys a little bit. Be kind out there. Bye now.